Hi guys, welcome to the channel. This is Oz Tech. I'm Dave and in today's video we'll be putting this and these and turning it into this. Okay, let's get stuck into it. So briefly, it's an AMD build. Uh, MSI X570 ACE motherboard. Okay, paired with a Ryzen 9 3900X. Okay, and going with that, we have 64 gig of Trident Z Neo DDR4 3600. Okay, it's CL1822244, I think. I'll put a description in the bottom anyway. Okay, and then on that there, I have two NVMe drives, two terabytes each. Uh, I'm going to occupy the two of the three NVMe slots on the board. Uh, cooling all this will be NZXT's Z73. Okay, 360 all-in-one liquid cooler. And as I say, this is all going into my Lian Li O11 Dynamic XL. Okay, it's on my previous video. Uh, powering the whole thing is MSI's new A850 watt GF. Okay, A being ATX, 850 being watt, and G being gold uh, plus, and F being fully modular. Okay, and then all that fans and stuff, I have uh, Lian Lee's uni fans, the SL120s. Okay, I have, what have I got of these? Nine, ten of these, all right, of three sets of three, and a single 120 for the rear of the case as an exhaust. Okay, now to go with this, I will be doing a push-pull configuration on the AIO. Okay, so we'll be using the GPU. It was going to be the RTX 2060 Super, which I bought last year uh, during the before the 30 series came out. So we're now going to swap that out and replace it with MSI's RTX 3090. Gaming X Trio. Okay, so that will that will pair nicely with the, the Ryzen 9 3900X. Okay, let's have a look at it then. Let's start building. Guys, before we get started, uh, with every build, it's a good idea to have a good clean surface. Okay, uh, and an anti-static mat if you can. I'm also standing on an anti-static mat. Okay, so I've reduced the, the risk of static, which can damage your components. Okay, so first off what we'll do is we'll set up the motherboard uh, and fit as much as we can to the motherboard before we fit the motherboard into the case. Okay, so just a few little bits and pieces that you're probably likely to have. One is a little toolkit that I have here. All right, magnetic tips uh, and extension, etc. Okay. Now this is a kit I got uh, from the UK, from eTechnic. Some of you might know him, he's a YouTuber. All right, does computer teardowns, builds, reviews, etc. So I do have an iFixit kit over there as well. Uh, but to be honest with you, I don't read it. Okay, it's not magnetic. It, everything just falls apart on it. And it's pretty crap and noisy. Uh, okay, just a little tool kit. Uh, some zip ties, okay, for cable management. I'll try and put them up somewhere where you can see them because of the, my dark shirt. You don't need that many, you're only going to need one or two. Okay, a little pair of side cutters as well, just to trim up the zip ties. And maybe some Velcro ties if you need. I've got various colors here which are spare. Uh, these ones actually came in the, the hardware case for the case. Okay, so. Let's get started. Sorry guys, gonna have to move you out of the way. Get them. All right. Get the motherboard open. Okay, let's have a look at the motherboard. Okay, I do have an overhead as well as a, a GoPro over there. Looking down, just surveying everything. Put that to the side first. Get out all our cables that we're going to need, and most importantly, our motherboard manual. Now these are pretty 
pretty straightforward these days. They're pretty good. Anything you want to know will be in here. Uh, always keep that to hand because it is handy to check all your input outputs on your board and the rest is just you know MSI paperwork, cable stickers, uh, quick installation guide uh, and some more. Uh, tea cozy. All good. Don't need that. Okay. Down of the way. Obviously, be very careful with this. Not the static bag. Don't really need it for the top of this. I'm going to put it that way. Get rid of the bag. Okay, so as we can see here, uh, I'll go back up to the over the top. All right, we have the CPU socket. All right, it's the M4 Ryzen socket. Okay, we have our, our VRM across here for our power delivery. We also have our two heat sinks and we have our cooling tube. It goes down to the chipset. Okay, it's an extended heat pipe, which helps. And then on here we have our little X570 cooling fan on the chipset. So we'll get rid of all this good stuff. That's the M.2 M covers. Okay. I was trying to get uh, cable extensions for this, but uh, I did get some, but they're only red and red and black. I couldn't get any gold, uh, gold and black, which would have been nice with the accent uh, and the colors. Okay, so that's it. Basically ready. Uh, with the newer motherboards these days, guys, you'll see that the I.O. shield is actually pre-installed, which is good. Because on the older motherboards, uh, that comes separately and you've got to fit that into the case. Which some people do forget, and then when they build it up, they realise when they turn it round, there's no I.O. I, I shield cover on the back of the case. And they've got to rip it all out again, and then put that back in. So... That's a, it's a handy bonus for them, which is good. Okay, so we'll get our CPU out. Get rid of this. In that bin. As I said, CPU of choice is our Ryzen 9 3900X. Okay. So as I said, I've done a quick review on these just before this. Um, I'll put the link in the description up top or down below, whichever the case may be. It does come with a Wraith Prism. Uh, prism or Spire? I can't remember. But I won't be using this. Obviously, I'm going to be using the AIO from... Oh. As it all falls apart on me. Let's go up there. Yeah, they're, they're a decent cooler for what they are. You get them free with the, the chip. As with the new 5000 series, you don't get a cooler. I think it's a 5600, you get a cooler with it. But 58, 59, etc., you don't get any coolers with them. So There we go. So that can go back in the box. He says. Maybe keep that for a build or pass it on to somebody I know who might want to use it. Let's put that out of the way. It's like a cooking show. All your bits under the table. Okay, so what we'll do is uh, just to press the lever, lift that up, and that releases the the socket allows the socket to take the chip. Okay, never touch a chip uh, by the top or the pins. Okay, that's where your heat spreader is, where your thermal paste goes on with your cooler. Okay, you'll probably find there's a little dot on the bottom corner. Okay. Um, or on the back even, there's a little gold. No, it's not going to work. There's a little gold dot on there. 
okay, which will correspond to the, whatever way you're looking at it, I would say top right, top left, sorry, on the motherboard, as you're looking at the motherboard properly. Okay. Uh, no. Now you match up your little gold dot with your corner in there, and you'll find that the rising writing runs parallel with this header, this socket header, if you know what I mean. So the writing will run parallel with that. So we just place it over the socket and then just gently let it go and let it drop in, which it has. Don't put any pressure down the way, just give it a little shake. And when we're happy with it's in place, which it is, we'll just put the tension down on the socket, and clip it into place. There you go, you've now installed your CPU. Sweet. All right, next up for this, we'll put in the memory. As I say, I've gone with the 64, uh, 64 gig kit, uh, 232s from the Trident Z Neo, G Skills. Okay, so I do have two other kits. I do have two other Kingston HyperX Fury. Okay, these are 32, a lot total are 216, 16, 16, 8, 8, 8, 8. Okay, but when I do populate all four um, dim sots, when I put the cooler on, uh, the cooler comes across and actually pushes on dim slot one and keeps it at an angle. So I don't know if it's actually affecting, I never booted it up to find out. So I don't know if it's going to damage the RAM or you know, you have boot problems or memory detection or any issues like that because it's under so much pressure. But uh, that's why I went with the two DIMMs. This is a 32 gig kit. These are a 64 gig kit, which is better for me for content creation, etc. And so that will go into slot two and four, or as dual channel. Doesn't really matter when you've got four DIMMs, but when you have two, always put them into slot two and slot four on your motherboard. I uh, don't know if you'll be able to see that in the overhead. Uh, there is a little diagram for, okay, and it tells you where to put your dims. Do, 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 do. Let's get these out of here. Okay, as you'll notice as well on the dims. Uh, you get a little notch here. Okay, it's not centered, so we'll just line it up with the notch that's in the motherboard, and you'll see what way it goes. So if you line it up, we know it goes that way. Now I've already I've already opened these. I just need them to open. Drop that in. He says. Okay, it's all lined up. Push down, you hear the click. And there she goes. Just be careful with some of these, these memory modules because they're pretty sharp. You know, you're gonna end up slicing the hand of yourself if you don't watch me do it in. And you'll normally find as well that this label, uh, most cases, not every case, but most cases, this label will actually point to the CPU. Okay, so you'll know exactly what way the notch is. All right, just line it up, click it in. And there we go. Okay, next up is what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fit the M.2, okay? There is three slots here for the M.2s. Okay, the very upper one, according to this motherboard manual, uh, goes directly to the CPU, all right? So, and then the slot two and slot three go through the chipset to the CPU. So it's a little bit slower, but in these days, it's not really, it's not an issue. Okay, so we'll just take the covers off. They should be pretty loose, because I've already had these off before. Okay, now these do come with uh, 
a heat spreader on it. Okay, which you'll need to remember to take off uh, once you fit your memory. Okay, if you don't take that off, the heat's just going to build up and it's not going to release and you're going to damage something. Where is it? So as I say, I have two of these. Uh, yeah, so a data SPX SX8200 Pros. All right, two, ter two, two terabytes. All right, I do have a couple of two uh, terabyte hard drives as well, which I'm gonna fit uh, in the case when we look at that. So we'll fit this first one. These do come with a little heat spreader as well if you wanna use that. Uh, but no, we've already got a heat spreader on top of this, so we'll just use them. So just lift them out gently. Now again, as you'll see, I don't know if I'll get a close up of that. Yeah, there is a little, little notch, just like your memory. Okay, and it does go in. Uh, angle, you might line up the notches. Okay, and just push it in gently and let it sit there. I also, in your motherboard box, which I should have prepped because I didn't. Okay, you should have some M.2 screws, which I'm not going to really need anyway because the screws are already on top. Screws are built into this. As you can see there, uh, the little standoff which is in the right place when I put that down. Okay, it's a secured in position. And again, we'll pull this off. Have a quick tidy up here in a second. Okay, it just clips back in there. Come on. Let me find out where it is. There we go. So that's secured in position. Let's move on to our second one. It is open somewhere. Yeah, so just take your time, guys, when you're doing this. As you can see, there's absolutely no rush whatsoever. Uh, I'm building this. Come on. Come off. Sorry guys, you can't really see that, it's clear. Um, see them again, has a little heat pad in the back. So just be careful with that. I need to change that for, we shouldn't need. Again, look out for the little notch. A little notch this side, a little notch that side. Uh, and at an angle, 45 degrees, and then just set it down. This one we won't need the other M.2 screws from the motherboard case, so we're happy just to, again, take that off. Set this on top. Didn't need that. Go back in the box. Okay, so that's the, the CPU fitted, uh, the RAM fitted, and our storage fitted. Oh, just put that down there. Okay, so let's just. There you go. Nice looking RAM. It is sharp, so just be careful with that, guys. Uh, CPU and our two sticks of storage, two terabytes, well, four terabytes in total. Okay. It'll be all your nice RGB goodness once it's finished. Okay, so that's basically uh, 
All right, that's, that's basically the, the motherboard done. So next step now is to prep the case. And we'll do that now. Okay guys, now the motherboard's kind of prepped. So we'll put that to the side, be very careful. Uh, and here it is, the Leon Lee O11 Dynamic XL ROG certified. Okay, so you get extra FPS for the ROG certification. Okay, so I have done a review on this uh, briefly. It was my very first video. This is my third video in my YouTube journey. Okay, so please bear with me guys. Uh, if, you have, if you have a look at that one, uh, it'll explain to you how I tear the case down and where all the components go, etc. So I don't want to go over here because it's going to be twice as long again. Okay, so uh, the front and side glass are held on by the, uh, by the top cover. Okay, two thumb screws and the side cover, sorry, is held on. Everything, everything's held on by the top cover. So there's two thumb screws on the top, plus a little release, black release latch, which I'll put in from my previous video. Slide it back um, and lift it off. Okay, you can see plenty of ventilation there. Uh, okay, it does have a, a magnetic dust cover as well on top. For anybody that wants to use air intake on the top or just stop crap falling into their PC. So we'll get rid of this. Put it under there. Now we can start taking off the side panels. So we'll start with the front panel, just slides out. Okay, it's on the little uh, two little latches and two little small ones on the bottom. Well, it's very hard to see in here. I still have the the peel on these as well so they are smoked anyway but that's why it looked crappy because the peel is still there all right next we'll take the main side panel off same again just slide it up put it somewhere safe it's safe under there okay now we can take the side panel off I was pretty hesitant to take the panels off at the front because all the lights were shining on them. So again, side panel. Uh, it does have your two magnetic dust filters. All right, one for your rad intake if you're going to have a radiator in the front here. Okay, and the other one for your PSU, which is at the back, uh, lower right hand side. Okay, we'll talk more about them in a minute. Okie dokie. A little bit dusty. It's been under my table for months. Okay, so I'm trying to get a better light here, guys, so you can have a look at it. There we go. But essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be removing these um, SSD drive covers. You can put SSDs up there or you can move these down to the bottom uh, where the rad compartment is and then put them in there, whatever you want, or air intake, it's up to you, whatever you want, but I'll be putting a, a, a 360 rad in this corner, okay. Tubes at the top, before you all start shouting at me. Yeah, I know, I've seen Steve's video as well, Gamer Nexus and Jay's Two Cents, nobody else. And if them guys have never had trouble with it, so technically, yeah. So anyway, as I say, I'm going to take these covers out and put them away. So this is your cable management bar. Okay, so I'm going to remove that shortly. And that's your two hot swap bays. I'll be putting the two, two terabyte hard drives up in here. Uh, I'll show you them in a minute. Okay, so we'll take off whatever we can take off and get it all ready. So if you just bear with me, I'll get things done. On the lower half here, I'm going to have three intake vans, uh, but you'll see it all as I go along. So the best about this Lee and Lee, I don't know if you guys can see that because of the light. I'm, I've got a screen behind the camera. I'm just looking at it. I don't know if my ISO is high enough or not, but what I will do is I'll bring up my other camera. Okay, and then I'm going to do the B-roll, 
These guys can all see it. Okay, so as I say, this is a, a radiator mount on the bottom. You got a radiator mount on the bottom, and then that just slides out. Okay, and you can fit your rad on here or your fans on here, and then just slide it back in. Or as I say, you can put your your SSD covers on here as well. That's what these cutouts are designed for. You can put your SSDs at the top. Okay, I'm gonna put this to the side. Just put that over there. Okay, we'll flip it back around again. So it does come, sorry, it does come with a, with a dust cover in the bottom. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to remove these. Take that off first. So you've got a brighter mat. You can't see any of your screws when you put them down. I'll put them down there. There you go. Oh man. This sucks. Just push that back in. I'll take the bottom ones out. Just just take your time with this guys. It will take you a couple of hours, but Especially when I'm trying to video at the same time, so it's taking me twice as long. Okay, I better start this again because I thought I wasn't recording on this phone, this camera here. Okay, so the cabling is inside is for your front I.O. Okay, on the top we have our power switch, uh, LED indicator, hard drive switch, etc. Okay, so that will plug into the motherboard. Next one down is our USB 3.0, all right, two ports to the front here, uh, one plug. Coming down again, we have our HD audio connections, again, which should be in the left, bottom left hand side of your motherboard when it's installed. And this second one here is your USB-C connector, okay. So make sure your motherboard has a USB-C connector involved. Okay, or it won't work. And then on the bottom two, on the Leon Lee O11 Dynamic XL, uh, we have two further USBs on the bottom. Okay, so you two USBs, one plug. And they will all get plugged into your motherboard. Okie dokie, I might just tape them up actually for now. Keep them out of the way. Do, do, do. Okay, so after then I better tidying up and find out where things go. Right there for now. So what we're going to do now is uh, put the the case on its back. Okay, and then we'll we'll drop in the motherboard um, and secure it in place, and then start building it up and wiring it up. It's so much lighter when there's no glass on it. It really is. To say the thing weighs about 13 kilos, uh, just on its own with the glass, not including any components, which is pretty sweet. Okay, so if we bring this camera over, okay, as you can see, this is a. By the looks of it, she's been set up for an ATX 
uh, motherboard. You got your standoffs uh, fitted, all nine. Okay, when we get our motherboard set up, just got to get our motherboard screws. I thought there would have been a gauge on this to see if you wanted an ITX or ATX, but not ATX, mini ITX. Pretty stupid putting a small motherboard in here, but <laughs> people do. Okay, let me get the motherboard screws. Uh, that came with the motherboard. They should be in the in the bag and we'll get it sorted. I just can't remember what I've done with them again. All right, carrying on, uh, as you can see with the standoffs here, the R9. Now this middle one here, uh, the way my motherboard is designed, okay, when you go to fit it, just in here is that hole, okay, and it's never going to go in unless I take all this cover off, which I'm not going to do. Okay, so eight screws are going to be sufficient to hold it in. That one, middle one's more or less just a pin, just to hold it in place. So we more or less line it up where it's supposed to go. Just be careful. Uh, and then just slide the I.O. where it should be. Now we're on that pin now. Uh, there we go. So we're now on that pin. It ain't going to move anywhere. It's not secure yet. We've still got to put the, the eight screws in. But just check that your I.O. is all lined up, which it is. It's perfect. Okay, and let's start putting the screws in. There you go, board is now secure. Happy days. Here we go, so I'm gonna flick it up now um, and start putting in some of this wiring while we can, uh, just before we start uh, fitting the fans and the radiator, etc. So, and then the motherboard, or the power supply, and then the hard drives. So I'm um, hopefully you guys can see all this because my lighting isn't the greatest, but we'll, we'll take it one bit at a time Okay. This way it'd be better to see. In fact, you know what, I might actually put the rad and the fans in first because otherwise I'm going to be stuck with all this wiring. But I can stick these in. Use my head, guys. Uh, now, normally when you put your M.2s in, it does affect your SATA. Okay, so uh, do double check your motherboard manual. Um, and we'll take it, your motherboard manual, and see which ones it affects. Because normally if you use the M.1 M M and the M.2 slot, it would probably affect SATA 4 or SATA 3. So just double check your manual and see which is which. All right, just trying to get these SATA cables in. These are going to be for my hard drive. So I'll get them out of the way while we're here. Yeah, 
So I'll just uh, I'll tidy it up in the back in a minute. Uh, the lower. Lower USB. Okay, it does have a little notch on it. I don't know if you can really see that. All right, there is a little notch on the top of the USB header. So just please be very delicate with this, as it could ruin your day very quickly. Okay, I do. They are easily damaged. Just line it up. And there we go. It's that one in. Cables will sort out later. Uh, do you have USB C coming next? Well, everything's coming next, to be honest. I was going to wait, put my radiator in, but. I will. I will indeed. These aren't too bad. Okay guys, so I've changed my mind now, so I'm just gonna do this, uh, the wiring as it is. Okay, so bear with me while I pass everything through the relevant uh, Holes, cutouts. So first, first will be USB C. So that's your USB C there. So you want to bring it out as close as you can to there. Okay. And then clip it in. There you go. Just like that. Next is going to be your HD audio. Again, now I'm going to take a chance and bring it up through there because it's going to go to here. So as you can see, there is, uh, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. It's a 10 pin plug, but there's only nine pins uh, and like pin eight has been blanked off and there is no pin on the upper right hand side so it can go in that way there we go that's your HD audio and plugged in it's just a shame that you got the spaghetti colored cables but that's just the way it is okay next up what do we have we have another set of USB 3.0s at the top. So we can either run them up the back. I'll show you all afterwards. Uh, that's a USB there. So of course it falls in between these two grommets, which ain't good. Uh, try the top one. Again, it's got a key. Uh, sorry, my head's in the way. Again, it's got a key on it. So the key is on the upside. And the socket. Oh, careful. And there we go. Done. USB 3.0. Your two SATA cables. It's just unfortunate, just the way the cutter is. They could have made it a bit bigger, but they didn't. And finally, least but not least, uh, which is, as everybody knows, a complete and utter pain in the Rexy. Okay, let me think where this is now.
Next up, guys, we have uh, the front panel uh, reset switch, power switch, uh, HS, HDD, hard, hard light, hard light, hard drive light, and power LED, pause and neg. Okay, so I am using the manual, as I said, that's what it's for. Okay, and I'm hoping you guys can see all this if you can. So on the uh, X570 Ace, uh, the front panel connectors are at the, the front, out on the right hand side upwards. Normally they're down here where these dials are, your massive overclock switch, uh, your power and your reset switch. But on this board, it's actually there. Okay, so it is very hard to see. Top right hand pin is missing. Okay. Sorry, top left hand pin is missing. So your power, so we're going to start from the bottom. Power LED plus and minus is on the bottom left hand side. Number pin two and pin one, two, three, pin four, two and four. So it's going to be your power LED plus is at the bottom. Okay. I may have to go and get my glasses, guys. We'll have to see. Plus at the bottom. Negative just above that. Again, feed these in gently, guys. You don't want to have any. See, I have one already. I put it in the wrong pin. Oh, man. Okay. And on the right hand side, we have HD LED, pause and neg. They are marked. I don't know if you... But on the back of it, you'll see a little arrow that indicates the positive. And the positive goes down. Pull this out of the way, flip it over. They're so flimsy, man. I wish they'd come up with like an actual socket that just fits them all in one go. I know you can get little uh, extension blocks that just fit straight in there. Okay, uh, we still have a reset switch and our power switch. So power switch is on the inside. The next two up, uh, pause is at the bottom. So we'll do a power switch. Where's the positive? The positive is at the top on this one. So it needs to go on the bottom. So we just spin it that way. Is that right? Yep, pause at the bottom. Excuse my hands and fingers, guys. There's just no other way of doing this. Okay, that's power reset. Last but not least, uh, reset switch. Pause to the top. Reset switch. Little arrow in the back indicates your positive, your plus. So it goes on plus at the top. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. It's that wired up and one pin left. Cool. Hardest part of the build over. Just pull that wire back. I give it some sort of neatness. Okay. That sucks. Why them? I should have made ones a bit wider. But Okay, it's in. Okay, what's next? Hmm. What do you reckon? I think we should go for the... We're ready for the radiator now. Get that mounted. Okay guys, up next is the AIO. 
the cooling solution for this PC. Okay, and it is dun, 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 NZXT's Kraken Z73. All right, let's pull it out. Let's have a look at it and get it installed. But first, what I need to do is uh, I need to take these AMD cooler brackets off the motherboard. Okay, and it's just as easy. I should have done it at the, at the start, but it's just as easy to do it now as it is then. Okay, I'll quickly uh, move the camera around and take these off. Okay, and put the standoffs in which are in this box. Okay. Okay, guys, we'll start by taking off the, the bottom bracket. All right, excuse my fingers and my hands. All right, the current AMD backing plate uh, will stay in place because the top bracket's in, uh, holding it all together. As I said, it would have been just as easy to, to do this. So, there we go. This is all it is. It's just a little standoff screw. And we screw it straight onto the backing plate. Okay, it just goes on hand tight, no tighter. Okay, that will secure the backing plate. Uh, why do we take the top clamp off? And just repeat the same. One screw. Top screw. I could lie this down and do it, but it's okay. He says, come on, be nice. There we go. And that's why I should have let it down. It's all good. Screw recovered. Or is it? Okay, we'll put these in. And there we have it, the four standoffs now for to accept the, the AMD bracket on the pump head. Okay, so what we're going to do now is get the um, radiator installed and it will be, yeah, hoses up. Okay, so don't be freaking out guys, it's all good. All right, let's move on to that. Okay, here we are. 360 AIO. Pump head, which has your, your new graphics now, which you can get uh, display GIFs or thumbnails or whatever you want, as long as it's small enough to go on there, memory-wise, uh, or system information, CPU, GPU, etc. Okay, we'll have a look at the fans. Number one fan. I think these are the... AERP fans, all right. The fluid dynamic bearings, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty good fan for what it is. Good high pressure, static pressure. So we got three of them, which all goes nicely. Stop. Okay. And also in here you get a ba bag of accessories. Okay, we'll just move this out of the way for a second, so I don't damage it. So what have we got? That is uh, Intel's backplate. Okay, if you have an Intel board, that will go in. Obviously not going to use that. AMD's securing bracket when these come. Okay. I might as well do this actually. Uh, push it down, twist it, pull it off. Okay, so that is, I believe, yeah, that's Intel's bracket at the moment. So I might as well go ahead and put mine on. I will have to adjust it later, probably. There you go. I'll give it a quick clean. And now we have fitted the AMD one. 
Alright. But the only thing is it doesn't the cover doesn't go back on because it's for Intel for some reason I think and Intel is the only people that make CPUs. Okay. We'll leave that there for now. Um, there should be some thumb screws in here as well. Obviously I've already opened these earlier just to test everything. They are Intel's little brackets or little standoffs, which I do not need. So I have an AMD AM4 platform and thumb screws as well for tightening down. Put that in the bag. Put this in the bag. Put Mr. Intel in the bag. Might come in handy some other time. Okay. Okay guys, now that we've got uh, the standoffs fitted to receive the axial pump head. Okay, that's what will go on with the thermal paste on. So now I am going to mount the rad up in this corner, this, this side piece, left hand side. Yes, hoses are going to go up the way guys. Okay, it's going to go in like that. Uh, I am going to do a push-pull configuration. Okay, so I'm going to have three fans on the outside, blowing air in. Okay, one, two, three. And then I'm going to have three Lee and Lee Unifan SL120. On the inside, drawing air in a suck. So push-pull config six fans on this it's a bit awkward to get in here with my hands and stuff like that so please bear with me while i get around here i will adjust the cameras accordingly let's try and give you the best view okay let's get into it Guys, we'll just I'll just turn this around here so you can have a a bit of a look at it. I honestly had to do a bit of cable management earlier because it was driving me insane. Okay. Just a, okay, guys. We'll just put our last couple of screws in. Okay. One goes in there. As I said, I had to do a bit of cable management off air because that was just driving me insane. But it's pretty straightforward, it's just gripping the cables, a couple of zip ties, and that's it. Okay, so that's basically everything tightened up now. You don't want to over tighten it in case you damage your radiator. Left that one behind. Excuse me. Okay, that's our radiator installed. We have our three cables. All right, which will join the splitter, uh, three-way splitter. Okay, I'll just leave them like that. I'll not untwine them because these are the cable manage litter. And that's it, we're good to go. So we'll flip her back around again and uh, get the uni fans installed. And we'll push the wires through. I've still got to find somewhere to put the controller, which will probably this cable management bar that sits here. Uh, I'll just put it on the back of that on the inside. So it'll be hidden and then everything I'll just plug into it. Bob's your uncle. Okay, guys, uh, here's the uni fans. I'm sure you've, you've all, well, most of you've probably seen them anyway. Okay, this is a, a three pack. I've got two more packs of these and a single. Okay, so total I've got nine. So I'll have three here. Three on the bottom is intake. Three on the side here in a rad is intake. And then three on the top of is exhaust. And then a single one will go on the back here as an exhaust as well. Which you couldn't do on a smaller O11 because uh, it just wasn't wide enough. Okay, so what have we got in here? We got the three cables. 
All right, one per fan, which you don't need. Again, I've already had these open before. So we'll go through these in a minute. Okay. Okay, so what comes in the box? Oh, three sets of screws. Three cables, an actual controller, which again I've already had opened up. So, one, two, three, four. All right, each port as such can take a four fans. Okay, so four, eight, twelve. So I can take a total of sixteen fans all together. Uh, ARGB. Splitter. I'll get that sorted in a minute and some looks like stuff sticky back from maybe the back of the controller. Okay, just stick onto the back of the cable management bar. That'll be handy. Uh, we have a smaller one there. Okay, let's get these fans at least connected together. Yeah, I'll have a look at the end of this to see what they look like, but if you want, jump on the Leon Lee's website. Okay, I'll put their link in the description below. I'm just going for subtle RGB on this. It's not going to be crazy, you know, like Mad Rainbow Peak and stuff like that. So it's just a nice subtle build. All right, so I'm only going to use one cable, so I don't need them two. I'll save them for later. Okay, so to connect these babies, these bad boys, uh, you got your contact pins on the back. Okay, which is actually for contacting these as well. So it's a matter of just plugging them together at a small angle. And then push them together like that. Carry on with this one. Okay, again, put the grooves together. And then snap them into place. There you go. You've now got three fans. You can do a total of four in a daisy chain. Uh, that's what the hub supports. So, but I think some people have done six and actually proven that it works okay. So I just want to make sure which way the wiring is going to go. Because uh, obviously if you're push pulling, okay, the air comes in this way and blows out the back where the supports are. That's the flow. It'll always get sucked in the front, the free end. Okay, and get blown out the back. So we want it to come this way. Okay, so our cable needs to be, he says, so our cable needs to be there as it can't be on the bottom. Cause that's for the next, uh, yeah, so that's your pins has the same contactor on the back of this uh, as the back of this one does. Okay, so we want to connect to the pins with the cable. So if I put it up the top, it should be in the right position. Just to go there and in through that grommet. Okay, to the back of the controller. Okay, so we'll get this fit up now then. All right, let's get these fans installed then. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, three uni fans. One connection. And just two cables that go into the hub. And that is it for three fans. That's pretty cool. Let's see if we can get this out of the way first for now. Nice and gentle with that. Okay, push pull. 
Don't forget, it's coming in this way. We do have some screws here. The joys of being a left-hander. Let's say these cables will go nicely through that grommet. Uh, secured in there. What we will do, well, we will untie these. Jesus. Let just slip them through there for now. Okay, so now I think it's time to get our pump head installed, um, get our thermal paste on, get our head pump head installed, and take it from there. Okay, so I'll put this on its back for now, uh, and we'll have a top down view or a top side view, uh, and we'll get it done. Okie dokie. Dun, dun, dun. Okay guys, uh, as I say, I'll be using my own, uh, where are we at, Noctua, okay, thermal paste, this is the NT-H2, as you can see there, so just a little P amount in the middle, that's all it needs, and then we shall bring this across, and rest it up on. Okay. So just a pea, pea size amount, or there or thereabouts. Okay, it's more than enough. That's all it needs. Okay, make sure if you're putting any coolers on that there uh, there's no plastic covers on them or anything like that. This is pretty clean. I've already cleaned it. So, okay. Slip it on here, try and get it on first time. Oh, you fucking dipshit. Okay, just slip it on. Just line up your... Air brackets. There we go. Brackets are set on. Get my thumb screws. Okay, just finger tight on that one. It's going to be a bit dark here, so. Last two thumb screws. Just take your time, guys. It's okay. No mad panic. It's not going to go anywhere. And lastly, top corner. Okay, that's on pretty secure now. So what we'll do, we'll just use our trusty screwdriver, just a couple of screws, opposite sides, just take it down nice and easy. And that one's really far out. Okay, you can't over tighten, as soon as it's down, it's down. Okay, that's tight. Tight, tight, 
tight. There you go guys, CPU cooler installed. Okay, let's get rid of this. As it says, connect all cables before we install it. We'll just keep that on just as a reminder. But everything else is more or less ready to go. So what's left now is the cabling for the pump um, and the lower fans and the upper fans. And that's it. All right, let's get her back on her feet. Okay, guys, moving on to the fans. As I say, I've got... Uh, 10 of these completely, or total. Uh, I've got three pack of three. All right, uh, the other pack's obviously on the rad. And I've got a single as well to make up 10 fans. Three, six, nine, 10, plus the three on the back with the NZXT uh, Z73. So say, don't worry about this gap here. All right, I'm gonna fill it in with this bracket that was initially on there to start off with. Okay, so I'll get stuck into these. Say three in the bottom. Uh, three will be going on to the, the radiator bracket that clips in. Okay, and then three will go on the top and one of the back. Okay, let's get stuck into it. Okay. Okay, so we're ready to go ahead here. So I don't need them anyway. Let's get these put in. Let's get our cables sorted. Yeah, it's the only place for them. Let's go through that one. We shall make that work. There you go. Okay. That's then put in. I do have two little screws just to make sure that's secure. says because once this goes in I'm not taking it back out again unless there's dramas with it there we go clipped in clipped in so we do have a dust filter underneath Okay, so if we need to get that out, get it cleaned, just to protect the inside of your case and your fans, obviously. I hate this one because I can never get it back in. There we go. All sorted, now we'll do the same for the top. Again, another three fans. We'll do it all over. This time, uh, there's no rack. Okay, so same again, they come with three cables in case you just want to use one. Uh, three fans and a hub. Okay, 
In the hub is all your fan screws, which we need. One, two, three. Uh, do I need all them? No, I don't. So I have all these already. On my other hub. But let's just say this, the single pack doesn't come with a hub. Okay, so you will need a hub to power the single one. You know what, you've no choice. Okay, so you need a hub kit to work. So it's no point buying them as ones. You might as well buy a kit. And then if you need an extra one, get an extra one. Otherwise it's no good to you. out of the way. I just need the one of them. Cable ties come in handy for stuff. Okay, zoom again. Rip all this apart. Just checking my other camera here. Seems to have gone wonky, which is over there. Kidding me? Come on, they're just bubble wrap. Jesus. As I say, guys, I hope uh, this is obviously for beginners. You know, it's not for experienced guys. There's other channels for that. You know what I mean? So, please, by all means, if you have any questions, drop them down below. It says it will. There's a long-winded video, but. It is what it is. Okay, so again, find the pins. Pins on that side. Okay. And the receiver on that side. Find the gaps, find the holes. Let's clip them in the place. See them again. Come on, come on. And that's it. Done, brilliant, so much better than the other ones. Again, this one here is gonna be exhaust, so it's actually gonna sit with the exhaust coming up through the roof. Okay, so I've already had a bit of a quick measurement earlier. So we've got plenty of room up there. There's nothing gonna hit, even if we had a, a 40 mil radiator, it still wouldn't affect our, our VRM or our RAM or anything like that. So there's still plenty of room. Okay, so now I just have to get these bolted up and we're good to go. Okay guys, I've just put it on its back side again. I'm all, just to make it easier to fit these fans, that's all. Okay, so I've had to, obviously the cables to the front, just the way the, the pins have gone. So we'll feed this back through. Um, and then we'll Carry on with it. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so I'll sort them in a minute. 
Just the one more to do for the rear. Again, as I say, it comes with screws, comes with the cables, but you need a fan hub to plug it into. Okay. It does come with, with instructions, etc. So every single one of them comes with instructions. Um, I don't know how clear that is. But uh, that's pretty good. They're all 12 volt DC. Same as the same as the AERP fans for the NZXT. Okay, what do we got here? Excuse me. One more, come on. There you go. All right, so obviously don't need to connect it to anything. That'll be the intake. That's the exhaust. So the exhaust side will go to the, the fan, or the, the case, sorry. Now, uh, cable's on top. So we'll just plug that in. So it clicks in. Disconnect all these wiring. So, and then we'll find an appropriate route in the top of the case somewhere. Come on. So what have we got? I'd love to go up that top corner because we do have a a drive bay in the top corner. Sorry. Let me just do this. Where's the other camera? So it will. Thank you. It's a little bit tight there, but between the motherboard, the top of the VRM cover, and this slot in here. It's a little bit tight, but it's it's the right size. No grinding, no squishing. So we'll tidy them up later. But they're looking good. Sorry, I'm not showing you this, guys. Okay. Believe it or not, I am left-handed when I'm writing, but with a screwdriver and everything else, I've got to use my right. Anybody else like that? Uh, I do have various parts there for other builds and maybe someday some manufacturers might like to send me some products to test and do builds in I would greatly appreciate it okay there we go fan Number 13, Tanley and Lee, three NZXTs in the back. 
Well, how's she looking, guys? Uh, it's a bit weird. I'll turn this light off. At the top. So, my lighting's not great. I need to sort it out. I know that. Uh, but it doesn't help when you're building in a black case. Uh, it really doesn't. When you're trying to set your white balance, etc., on the cameras of, of a couple of cameras, of actually three. Um, of a 90D as a main camera, Canon, and a M50 as a B-roll with various different lenses and adapters, etc. And up the top there, which you haven't seen yet, is a GoPro 9, just for an overall view of everything. Okay, so what's next, guys? What do you reckon? The big beastie? Or should we do the cable management first and then plug in the uh, graphics card? All right, so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so we'll do a bit of cable management as we go. Just makes it so much easier by the end of the day, at the end of it. So everything's smooth. There's nothing sticking or grinding. Happy days. That's good. Okay, I'll flip it around and readjust the cameras and we'll do a bit of cable management. fit it into the Lian Lee hub. Okay, you can fit four sets of fans. I've put the sticky back on it for now, but it does come with a magnetic sticky back as well, so you can magnetically uh, stick it to a drive somewhere. Obviously with the back cover on, uh, you want to be able to put it somewhere. So, okay, so just remember which is number one, because uh, then when you go to do your I think it's L Connect software, you, you know which section is which. So one, two, three, four. Okay, let me just have a quick look around the front again. Okay, so I want number one to be the upper top ones. So one, two, three, and then the rear exhaust is gonna be number four. Okay, so I'll go ahead and plug these in. All right, there is little push buttons. Uh, if you just push them in, you can, you can pull them out. Again, it only goes in one way. Four pin and a th three pin. Okay, match it up, three pin. Let's get them that way. Yeah, just clips in. And the four pin. Okay, so say that'll not come out. So if you push that in, it allows you to pull it out. Okay, so that's the first one's done. So in the pack, you do get a set of power cable. All right, the power is the hub. Okay. You also get a USB uh, connection. Okay, so it can connect to your motherboard. And I believe that does all your uh, L Connect software. Okay, and you do get an AGR, sorry, an ARGB connection 
Okay, it's a splitter. That's not good. Where are we at? Come on. Cables, cables, cables. The joys of computers. Okay. So basically what that does is you get the power, goes onto your fan header. Okay, so it's a four pin. And you also get a ARGB connector, okay, which is the five volts uh, ARGB. I've only got one left because I'm already using one for something else. You do get an AGR splitter as well in case you want to maybe connect another hub uh, or you another hub coming in, but you don't have enough uh, ARGB headers on your motherboard. So you, they give you an actual splitter for that, which is pretty good. So... So we'll go ahead and plug these in and then look at the cable management. All right, three pin, three pin. Can only go in one way. Okay, set a par. set up our own. and last but not least we have our USB 2.0 connection as I say that connects all your your L connect software so again it's just got a little connection on the back which I believe can only go one way there you go all cables connected. ARGB, USB C, or USB, sorry, and it's just fell out on me. Wasn't in very well. No, definitely only goes in one way. That's a bit crazy. Oh man, they're all falling out. and set a par, the third one. Just had to keep an eye on them too, make sure they don't come out as we're trying to get this installed. Okay. I'll probably do a bit of a, a time lapse while I speed this up and get it all connected and get it all in place. It's got a magnetic cover on there. So what I'm gonna do is When I go to fit this case, okay, it's going to be magnetically attached on the back of that, which it is at the moment. So if I pull this off, then I can take it off. Cool. Okay. Moving on to the next. So that's the fan hub, etc. done. Right, next up, we're gonna put our power supply in. I might as well do it while we're here. Uh, I was gonna use cable extensions, black and red cable extensions, but after looking at them and plugging them into the motherboard, nah, I don't think so. They're, I don't think they're good enough. So I'm just gonna stick with the normal uh, power supply cables. Okay, so what we have here is MSI's brand new uh, MAG A850GF. Okay, it's an 850 gold rated plus uh, power supply. Okay, the A stands for ATX, the 850 is for wattage, the G is for gold certified, and F is for fully modular. Okay. Uh, if you check out my previous video, it's got a full rundown on it. So, what I'll do is I shall take it out of the box and let us have a look at it. And 
cables. So we'll just zoom out a bit, ever so bit. So in the box come uh, your main power supply, the Australian power supply obviously for Australia. canvas bag, you get your screws for screwing it into the case, I'll get rid of the, all that for now, let's just see what we have in here, I'm only going to use a handful of these, so, okay you get your main motherboard cable which we need, alright 24 pin, so we need that, put that to the side, So we got an 8 pin PCIe, we need three of them for our uh, RTX 3090. Okay, we have a SATA, so I'm using that one, two, three, there's a four, four SATA connectors for that, which is good because we have one, two, three, four SATAs to drive. Power. That's good. Uh, another 8 pin PCIe, we need that, which one's this, 6 pin PCIe, uh, 8 pin CPU, we do have two connections on the motherboard, uh, two 8, 8 pin connectors, honestly guys, unless you're heavily overclocking it, you only need one 8 pin Okay, no matter what anybody tells you, you just need one 8-pin connector for the motherboard. But, since we have them, we're going to plug them in. Okay, what else do we need? Uh, some Olex, which we're not having in this build, so we don't need them. We have another one, two, three, another four connector, uh, SATA connector cable. Don't need that. And last but not least, we have another 8 pin PCIe. How many have I got here? One, two, three. Uh, I already have three, so I'll give you an extra fourth one. What else do I need for PCIe? Uh, no, just three for the graphics card. Uh, two 8 pins for the CPU. Motherboard and the 24 for the motherboard, and that's it. We're all good. Put these back in the case for a later date. Okay, power supply. As I said, I give a quick review on it the other on my previous video. Straightforward standard. ATX standard size, uh, 140mm fluid bearing, All right. comes with a 10 year warranty, which is pretty cool. Uh, the MAG A850GF, but obviously I'm gonna, you're not going to see that anyway in the back of the PC. Okay, so on here we have the motherboard connection, okay, and the other motherboard connection, the 24, and then we have a CPU. Two CPU connectors, uh, one to VGA one and VGA two, and then sat on peripherals. Uh, we've got four of them, all right, on the different rails. So, yeah, MSI's brand new power supply 850. It does come in a, a 650, a 750, and an 850 version of the ATA, ATX. I'm not sure if they're bringing it out for. A, uh, e ATX or ITX, should I say, and the smaller versions. I'm not sure if it's coming out yet. SFX, S SF power supplies. But anyway, we'll plug in what cables we need and we'll slide it in, get it bolted up, and we'll go from there.
Okay, so you got your CPU. I want to see you guys if you can actually see up inside here. Maybe you can. You can see the one there. The two CPU power headers. Okay, so obviously it's got a locking bracket on the top. Push this in. There you go, you heard that clipping in. Push the excess back. Same again. This one is okay. Bit of cable training. All right, clip it back in. It only goes in one way again, guys. There you go, clipped in. Sorted. Yeah, if I had red and black cables in there. It didn't look good. I was trying to get the gold, gold and black, or even gold and white, to try and go with the accent of the board, but I couldn't get any. I couldn't get any in time, put it that way. Okay, so they, they look okay. You know, everything's functional. All right, 24 pin as well. As you can see, it just has the big clip. Uh, and the clip's on the outside here. So, of course, just flip it over, put it on itself, and then just, there you go, plug it in, and then feed all that cable back to the back. Not the best looking cables in the world, just standard power supply cables, but I think they would have looked better than the red and black ones. I did have the red and black ones in here, but they didn't look that good. So I'd rather wait till I get the proper cables that I need. And that's all good. Okay, so this is the actual, if you can see, that's the USB from the actual, uh, what do you call it? The hub. So I've got to plug it in here, just into this second and final USB. Okay, so bottom right pin is missing. So it goes in that way. Very careful you don't break any of these pins. Just take your time. I just work them nice and slowly. Feedback any excess cable back to the outside. Okay, this one here. We do have your um, your fan header, so it's just a standard four pin fan header, and then the, the three pin ARGB. Uh, where have I lost it? Where have I put it? I thought I had two. Yeah, there's one here. There's one here, and I'm using one over there. Okay, so this one will come across this here. Say so three pins, just be careful, They're very, very fragile. And you'll see there's a little arrow. On the, if you if you don't I'm trying to get used to focus. Come on camera, just a wee bit. And there's a little arrow, uh, like a triangle, which indicates your positive uh, pin. But there's only three pins anyway, so there's only three pins on the board. The third pin's missing. So you can only put it on one way. Be very careful. There you go, that's that put in. Just feed the excess back. So again, now we've just got a fan header, a uh, four pin fan header. And our closest one to this is over here. Okay, so we'll feed all that in through the back. I'm trying to keep all your cables nice and tidy and away from any fans. Again, only goes on one way, he says. Little latch on the back. I'll just put that in there like so. There you go. So that's our hub. That's all it takes for the hub. There's three, three cables for the hub, which powers all 10 fans. And obviously your other uh, 
three fans on the back of the radiator from NZXT ones. Okay, they're all powered from the USB and these connections up here on top of the pump, which are fed through the top. USB goes up through the top, goes down the back of the board and comes up and is plugged in here. Okay, so there you go. Okay guys, uh, not sure which way to bring the VGA cables or the graphics card cables, whether to bring them through here and bring them up over the top or bring them through the side here. Bear in mind, CPU is going to go here. It's a big lump of a CPU. I might have to bring, bring them out here and then bring them in. So what we'll do is go ahead and fit the CPU first. Okay. So there we have it. Okay. This is MSI's <coughs> RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio. Okay, that is a beautiful card. It's a solid heavy card. It's like 1.5 kilos or 1,500 grams. But yeah, it's a pretty, pretty hefty, hefty card. It has your th three uh, display ports and one HDMI 2.1 version. Okay, so obviously first of all remove your protective cover from the PCIe slot. Get that ready. Uh, I've already pulled that back. And where's my screwdriver gone? I thought I'd already taken these out, but obviously not. Because they're in front of us. One, two. Keep the thumb screws because we're going to need them back again. Okay, line this up. Excuse my big head. Line this up, line it up with a slot. Give it a push to you here, click. There you go. Pretty good. All right, this does come with a, if you know anything about the 3090s, they do come with a anti-sag bracket. Okay, it fits in like that. So I'm gonna try it with it first and have a look and then if I need to, then I can go back and fit it at a later date. Okay, so we'll get these thumb screws in first. Okay. Reasonably tight. Just gotta hold this beast up. Okay, I did click in. Graphics cards in. So there we have it. RTX 3090. As I say, uh, you probably all go back and fit this extension. Don't know. I could paint that different colors, maybe a couple of stickers or whatever, but we'll wait and see. It does come with extra uh, foam pads. Okay, if you want to just support it elsewhere. So, we shall leave that in there for now. Carry on with the build. So I can either bring the, the cables through the top here, or if I bring them onto the bottom, and then over the top, obviously, it ain't going to hamper airflow. Well, it's just down to aesthetics. Uh, what's going to be better? Is it going to be better at the bottom or at the top? There's only one way to find out. Let me bring them through the bottom first. The only reason I'm going that way, guys, is because it's easier. Less hassle. With all the cable management that's going on at the back here, it's just turning into a spaghetti junction. Okay. What's happened there? Why is it locking up on me? 
that weird? No. The extra pins didn't want to come through, but they're through now. How's that looking? Is that looking all right? Do we need more light at the bottom? I think we probably do. Okay, so we have our initial 8 pin PCI E. So if I plug this in, again, guys, it's only the clip on the top. Um, can only go in one way. Again, just be careful, take your time. There you go. One of your pin in. I'm not a fan of these, I should have had three separate. Eight pins. Second one. I know these are rated at nearly 370 watts, uh, these cards, maybe 400 watts, if you want to overclock the, the life out of them. But honestly, me, I'll not be overclocking anything. It'll just be bog standard as it is. So just for me, it's uh, more to do with the rendering, etc. cetera. Um, so that's why the 3900X is in there. Well, that doesn't look too bad, actually. More of a stealth build than anything else. I'm just a bit annoyed about this. This looks pretty crap. If I can get these cables to come back like that. It's not bad, actually. It's not great. We're going to bring them out the top, out through here, over the top of the 24 pin, and just bring them straight in. Keep them away from that. So we'll give that a go. And the simple fact is, because you got that piece of horrible that's going to sit out and head against the glass, but it looks better that way than it does down there. Crazy, eh? Yep, and Thor's nodding his head. He agrees with me. He's down there. I'm in Captain America. Okay, what's next, guys? As I say, I do have the cables, red and black ones here. So, yeah, they're Killmaster. Just colored extension cable kit. Nothing fancy. Let me know in the comments. I'll pull one out here, or a couple out here, and see what's what. I did try the motherboard before, but it was extremely tight. Extremely, f you know, it's all red and black. Uh, maybe, who knows. Or you got your 8 pin PCI E, uh, which I th think is possibly going to be a better fit. You know, going that way. I've got cable combs with them as well, so you can space them out. Just like that one's all bent, they're clear, but we'll see what happens. All right. Awful big cable, just for... Okay, L-shaped for SATA connectors. They can only go in one way, as I showed you earlier. Okay, that's the case, LED hub connected. 
Next one is same again. Only one way you can go in, guys. Just a little L ship. This is the Lian Lee fan hub connection. Okay, I should have another two. All right, this one here. Do it this way. Try to keep everything down low entirely because I'm going to bury it all down there. Same again. Oh, come on. That's that one. And this one here. Goes that way. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. As far as powering everything, everything is now completed. Cable management isn't the greatest, but it's a personal preference, guys. All right, just be careful you don't pull any cables out or damage anything or, you know. As I say, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this back cable management bar on the back and that will, it's magnetic, it will stick to it. Get it the right way around, Dave. Uh, it should just fit in like that. I might have to move a couple of cables at the bottom because it looks as if they're Stopping this from going in. Yep. It's okay. It's not a problem. There you go. Another one. What the heck? Okay, the hub is now magnetically attached itself to that. There we have it. I've just got four screws to put in this and we're done. Okay, number one screw. Then gently, don't have to hang off anything, guys. It's not Empire State Building. And finally, last screw. There you go. Last screw. What do you think? Looks pretty cool. So what I will do, last but not least, okay, I have two hard drives to go in here. As I say, they're on caddies. There's four hot swap bays, okay. They're all pre-wired, everything's good. I just haven't connected these ones. So if I ever use these bottom two, I'll have to dig into the wiring and reconnect them to the SATA uh, connectors on the motherboard. But I know yeah, that's now tight so they don't come off. There's a little thumb screw and a little latch that opens up. You slide in your caddies. Uh, yeah, go from there. You're not going to see in there. Okay, as you can see, they are Seagate Barracuda Compute, two terabytes. All right, these are the 7200 RPM ones. Uh, 256 mega cache and 90 bucks Australian so what's that about 50 60 bucks American so two terabytes and two terabytes okay so that's four terabytes in total between the two drives plus I've got four terabytes on board MVNEs okay so slide them in there you go. They automatically go into the, the connectors. 
plugged in, slide them across, tighten up the thumb screw. I'll make sure this one's pretty reasonably tight because I don't want it coming out. And there you go guys. That's how easy it was to connect them drives. No extra cables and stuff, it's all pre-wired. So, I think we're nearly done guys. Just gotta put the two covers on, excuse me. Okay, so cover number one. Oop, oop. Everything's some screws. It's great. If you can get them to start. What the hell's going on here? There you go. Second one. Say so hot swappable, so you can change them while it's running. Pull one out, put a new one in. All good. First things first, turn the back on, the bar, back the power supply on the back. That's a good sign. Hasn't gone bang. It might start a couple of times while it's doing its memory training, etc. And we do have a start light down the bottom, which is good. I don't think anybody can see that. There you go, a little. Red LED start button. <clears throat> okay. And there we have it. Everything's up and running. That's pretty cool. I'll need to have a look at my front panel connection headers because I just hit the start button and nothing happened. So, way hey, there we have it. Everything seems to be going okay. All the, the rainbow RGB, infinity, motherboard. Just letting it post. And our CPU temperature is 24 degrees.